Golf Central. Brought to you by Titleist. After a delay late in round two because of darkness, they are back on track in Las Vegas. Round three is in the books in the Shriners Hospitals for Children Open. Lisa Cornwell, Brandel Chambly. Let's get right to the highlights to kick off Golf Central tonight. Starting with the overnight leader, Rod Pampling, Brandel here at the par four sixth. I right, missed the green at the fifth and made bogey and trying to rebound, missing the green at the sixth and uh, quite a different result, heading in the right direction finally. He'll take that all day, moving him to 14 under. Lucas Glover, meanwhile, in the mix for Eagle. Yeah, the par five ninth is like a house of fun for these talented individuals and uh, he made it look pretty simple. Back to Pampling after a birdie, here he is at eight to save par. Well, in the first round he played beautifully, but not necessarily because of what he did on the green. Same thing was true in round number two. In round number three, he did really struggle on the greens. So he would <coughs> drop back to minus 14. Brooks Kepka, meanwhile, at the par 4 10th. Showing some discretion off of the tee, using an iron, playing to uh, a specific yardage. And that strategy, well, it paid off beautifully because he hit the perfect shot right beneath the hole, gave him a great look at birdie that he capitalized on. He certainly wouldn't get to 12 under at that point. Pampley now at the par 4 10th for Pargan. Again, continues to struggle on the day. He would lose almost two shots to the field on the greens. So back to 13 under there and a three-way tie for the league. Glover at 15. Look at the way he sets those wrists and just traps it on the upslope. Uh, there's a statistic called all around on the greens. Who chips it the closest? If you're looking at the man right there that leads it this, this week. So we have a leader change at that point. Glover taking command at 14 under. Pampling at 13 for birdie. Mm, he just hit it closer and he did. <laughs> He would get back to minus 14 and tied with Glover. Glover now at 16. He's going for it. I have been amazed at uh, the aggressiveness right. that players have showed right. to these right hole locations at 16, front hole locations at 16. Uh, be right, uh, and if you're going to be wrong there, you'd rather be wrong long. It looked good in the air, uh, but uh, erred on the conservative side. He would two putt for birdie, moving him to 15 under. Kepka now at 15 from 318. Well, when they first designed this hole, it was a drivable par four. Well, I'm sure they didn't have hybrids or less than driver in mind when they designed it. And that's all it was for him, just a hard cut at the left side and beautifully executed. That's crazy. Way too easy for him there. He would make a birdie move to 14 under one back of Glover back to Kepka at 16 for birdie. Essentially a par four for this day and age, the players. I mean, they are coming in there with irons and uh, making a four there. And on the card, it's a birdie. So again, another tie at the top of the board. Let's stay with Kepka here at 17. And if there's a knock, a knock against Brooks Kepka, it's that perhaps he lacks the versatility, able to work it right to left or left to right. His shot is a cut. And when you take on a cut into a left pin with water left and you double cross yourself, you pay the price. He hit it in the hazard there yesterday, got lucky. Today, not near as lucky. That water ball would result in a double bogey, dropping him to 13 under. Now his approach at 18. Yeah, beautiful drive here at not a particularly easy fairway to hit. Not only did he hit it, he hit just an absolute vapor trail and left himself just a short iron off of the tee. As we take a look at the scores after three rounds, Lucas Glover in control at minus 15 after that 65. Brooks Kepka, Rod Pampling just one shot back. So a lot of low numbers there in Vegas. Uh, going back to to Glover, some things, Brandel, he seems to uh, to make it look easy. Some things he struggles with kind of give us the pros and cons of Lucas Club. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of players, uh, some things come easy to him, some things not so easy. Uh, he has a lot of downset in his golf swing, uh, like some other players, and it gives you a lot of lag, and uh, it might make you a great ball striker, and it certainly does him. Uh, he led Sanderson Farms in greens and regulation, ninth in fairways, 13 uh, off of the tee in driving distance. If you notice, when he cuts, when he changes from backswing to downswing, he has a lot of increase in his set, and he has a lot of bow at impact and that's a beautiful way to swing the golf club and hit it a long way but if that creeps into your putting stroke as it's apt to do well then it gives you a lot of problems and in that particular area he does struggle great ball striker but look at what he does on the greens as far back as you want to go he struggles on the greens and as we say so often you don't have to be a great putter if you're a great ball striker you just have to be average and this is well far from average he's had a marvelous 
his career on the PGA Tour. He's a major champion. He's won Wells Fargo, uh, and he may well go on to win tomorrow. Enviable in a lot of areas, but it is so hard uh, to have a lot of downset like a Sergio Garcia in your golf swing and figure out a way to have a neutral release, which you have to have if you're going to be a great putter. When you see putting numbers like that, do you immediately think, okay, this guy's a ball striker. He loves to go out and beat balls. Maybe he needs to spend more time on the putting green, or could it be more technique? Well, when I see uh, putting stats like that and somebody's been out on tour for a long period of time, you have to expect they're extraordinary at something else because nobody stays on tour with, uh, with uh, putting statistics like that unless they're extraordinary and make it up somewhere else. All right. Right now we are going to uh, George Savarikas, who spoke with the leader. Yep. All right, kind of a roller coaster finish. How do you steady things on the 18th to at least close with a birdie? Uh, I mean, you got a wedge in your hand. You, you kind of expect to hit it close, especially with a little backboard behind it. But uh, yeah, it was really up and down. The ball striking was, was pretty poor, and uh, for some reason, I couldn't get the speed of the greens. They looked like they were flying, they looked like they were crossing out there. Um, the speed was just bad, but. Uh, you know, overall, I guess one under isn't the worst. All things considered, are you glad to be in the spot that you're in considering your assessment of your play today to just be one off the pace? Yeah, I mean, for as bad as we played today, it was, um, you know, kind of happy to be one off the lead. But, uh, you know, just, just kind of struggled everywhere. We are full draw and everything, as you saw on 17, and, and that was kind of the story of my day. Brandon, he talked about that pulled draw. Let's dissect both of these shots because you mentioned yesterday he went in the water as well. What did you see? Well, I say it all the time, uh, all things being equal, experience will make a player better. Uh, you could uh, sit here and look at the fact that uh, maybe he's not the best at working at right to left uh, in certain situations and, and, and want to dismantle his golf swing to save that one particular problem. Little nuanced things will allow him to figure out how to hit these soft draws off the right side in critical spots. Uh, but back-to-back -back days at the 17th, again, it's an intimidating hole. You have to get up there and hit the right shot with the widest margin of error. And clearly, he wasn't playing to the widest margin of error today on the 17th hole. What does that do for him mentally as he chases this title on Sunday? Well, it's nice to have every shot in the bag, uh, and I'm sure he'll get up on the 17th hole tomorrow. When you get stung like that, <laughs> when you get your bell rung, uh, you learn to play with a little bit more discretion. That's what I talk about uh, with experience. He's a young player, uh, enormously talented, plenty of length, uh, plenty of skill on the greens but uh, again uh, tomorrow he'll be a smarter player than he was today. And you talk about fearless when he's one of those young players that is mm -hmm. kind of fearless so it'll be interesting to watch him especially down the stretch. Well let's take a look at some other highlights from Las Vegas starting with Cameron Smith at the par 415. From Brisbane Australia it's the man who finished seventh on the web.com tour in 2016 and tied for 11th at Sanderson Farm so off to a nice start in his PGA Tour career and well Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just that far away from joining Andrew McGee as the only person to make a hole-in-one on a par four in the history of the PGA Tour. Nice to have a kick in for Eagle. He would shoot a 68 and is at minus 11. Russell Henley, meanwhile, at the par four six. Yes, if, uh, if you want to watch somebody putt uh, with uh, a lot of freedom and a beautiful stroke, just follow Russell Henley around. Uh, it is a gorgeous stroke. Uh, both technically and from a tempo standpoint, from a freedom standpoint, uh, putting is so much about confidence and comfort. He seems to have plenty of both. It was a 63 in round three for Henley. Scott Piercy, meanwhile, at the par five, 16th, going for it from 199. Yes, uh, we talked a little bit this week about the young man Aaron Weiss. He and Scott Piercy share a teacher who is the head teacher at TPC Summerlin, Jeff Smith. So. Uh, as it relates to those players, they're very comfortable this week. Jeff Ogilvie, he's been around for a while here at 17. Jeff Ogilvie, uh, quietly, has won eight times on the PGA Tour. One of the best guys in the world of golf and one of the best shots you'd ever hope to see at the 17th to that back left hole. It was a five under 66 for Ogilvie. He is at minus 13. Ryan Moore. And these hybrids have changed the game. Uh, not that long ago, well, I guess about two decades ago, this would have been probably a two iron. And uh, you might have chewed on it a little bit longer. Uh, but instead, you pull a hybrid out, get the ball up in the air with much greater ease. Turn everybody into uh, a Jack Nicklaus from 230 yards. There you go. It was a two putt for birdie for more at the par 5 16th. Matt Jones here at 18, his third. And. That's exactly how you draw it up. Two under 69, he's at 
minus 11. Taking a look at these lowest final round scores at this golf course since 1992, and there have been some low ones, none other or none lower rather than last year's winner, Smiley Kaufman, who fired a 61 to get his first PGA Tour title. Well, 